Hi, I'm Jill from ingvid.com and today in this lesson we're going to look at metaphors which are a different way of using language really but these metaphors are used a lot in everyday life. Uh, you could also call them idioms. They're a little bit like idioms. And there are a lot of them. Uh, but I just want to mention that there are metaphors and similes, and they're similar in a way, but different. So a metaphor um, says one thing is another thing. So, for example, in my first sentence here, thanks for helping me, you're an angel, okay? An angel is supposed to be a good person who helps people, but you're talking here to an ordinary human being and calling them an angel because they've helped you, okay? So you're saying you are an angel. So you equals angel. So in a metaphor, it's saying something is or somebody is something else. Um, the other um, type of uh, style of speaking is called a simile, and we'll have another lesson on that, a separate lesson. And with a simile, you, you don't say A is B, you say A is like B. So with this one, you'd say, you are like an angel, or you are as good as an angel. But with the metaphor, you are an angel. So that's the difference between metaphors and similes. So please look at the other lesson about similes to see some examples of that, okay? Right, so concentrating on metaphors. Thanks for helping me, you're an angel if someone helps you. You could say this to somebody if they help you. Thank you, you're an angel. It's a nice compliment, a nice thing to say to somebody who's helped you. Um, second example, the people in that club are just a bunch of sheep, okay? A, a bunch, that's a sort of casual, informal word. A bunch, it means a group. A group, a group of people. You can have a bunch of flowers. That's the normal use for bunch, bunch of flowers, several flowers held together. But this is people who are being called sheep. They're not literally sheep. People are not sheep. Sheep are animals. People are humans. But this is saying the people in that club are a bunch of sheep. They're behaving like sheep because what sheep do, they all stick together, they all stay together and they all follow each other, they all do the same thing. So this happens with people sometimes. They, they don't have their own independent ideas, they just copy what everybody else does. So that's the meaning of this, this one. The people in that club are just a bunch of sheep, okay. This one is probably more of a positive thing to say to somebody. You're such a busy bee. It maybe sounds a bit patronizing, perhaps, but if someone is really busy, you can say they're a busy bee. And the two bees is a sort of poetic thing again. Um, but busy bee. The thing about bees is the bees that buzz around, um, they, they're always busy. They're collecting pollen from flowers and going back to the hive and they're making honey. So they seem to be busy all the time. So to call a person a busy bee is that they are also running around and doing things and being very busy and working a lot and never stopping. Okay, here's another one. London is a melting pot of people and cultures. Okay, so London is a melting pot. 
It's not literally a pot with food in it. Um, it's a melting pot of people and cultures. The people and cultures aren't being thrown into a pot. The London, the city, just contains a lot of people from different cultures, different countries. Okay. Here's a good one from if you're if you're working in an office or somewhere and you have some ideas and you tell them to your boss. I had some good ideas, but my boss shot them down. Okay, so to shoot something is like with a gun. All these good ideas that you've just produced and your boss doesn't like them. Or he doesn't like you, maybe. Mm but he shoots down your, all your ideas and they come falling to the floor. Not literally. Again, it's not literally true. Not literally true. It's just a picture in your mind, like your boss with a gun shooting down your ideas. So he doesn't like any of your ideas. He just shoots them. Um, destroys them. So you had some good ideas, but my boss shot them down. Okay. Another one. My head is so full of problems. It's spinning. To spin is to go round and round and round and round like that. To spin. Well, your head can't literally be going round and round and round and round and round because it would kill you probably if that happened. After two or three turns, you'd, you'd be dead. So it can't be true, literally. It's just a picture in your mind of your head. All these problems inside your head, it's making it feel Ooh, like that, okay? So it's not literally true, it's just a, an image, a picture. Now, here's a slightly different one. Her dress has a very loud pattern. Now, if you, oh, I don't have a pattern on. Um, this, oh, this scarf has a slight pattern. Stripes, it has stripes and some slightly different colors, but I wouldn't call that a loud pattern. Um, if the pattern is loud, it's very strong. Lots of different colours and shapes, something really strong. So loud, it's not to do with the sound in this case, it's to do with how it looks. So loud and soft for music, yes, but for a pattern, a loud pattern. So next one. People are flocking to the pop concert. Now, the metaphor here is this word, flocking. And it goes back to sheep, because the collective word for sheep is a flock of sheep. So when you see sheep running across a field, they're all in a bunch, like we said, bunch of sheep but the proper name for that bunch is a flock. So if people are flocking to the pop concert, it's like they're sheep again. We're back to the sheep. Uh, so it's a little bit metaphorical, if you like. They're not just going. People are going to the pop concert. They're flocking in big groups, all going to the same place. Okay. Right, now this is about two people who were good friends, but, oh, at first, but then things turned sour. Now, usually in the literal world, things that turn sour are things like milk. If you leave milk too long and you taste it, oh, horrible, that sort of cheesy taste, not very nice at all. Um, and this has the same idea really, two people who are good friends to begin with at first, but then things turn sour, it goes wrong, something goes wrong, they're not friends anymore, 
maybe they had an argument, they disagreed, things turned sour. Okay. And let's end with um, quite a famous quotation from Shakespeare. I like quoting from Shakespeare. He's one of my favourite writers. And what he said in one of his plays, he said, all the world's a stage. He's talking about the theatre because he wrote plays. He was a man of the theatre. Um, so he's saying all the world is a stage. Wherever you go, not just in the theatre, but everywhere. Because people are acting in some way. And all the men and women, merely players, merely that means just, just players, just. And players is another word for actors, okay. They're just actors, people. He's saying people just act their part, even if they're not in the theatre, they're playing a part in some way. That's what, well, it's not Shakespeare saying it, it's one of his characters in one of his plays is saying it, so it's a bit different. So it's just one person's opinion in the play. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women, merely players, they have their exits, they go off, and their entrances, they come in, they come and go, and they come and go. And they do what they do, they say what they say, and this character thinks they're acting just like in a theatre. So this is what's called an extended metaphor, okay? Because we've got a metaphor and adding, it, it's adding more and more ideas to it. All the world's a stage, that's a simple metaphor, but then saying more in the same way, all the men and women are actors. They come in, they go out, they come in. So lots of different things that fit into that metaphor. Okay, so I hope I've helped you to understand metaphors, whether English is your first language and you're studying English literature at school or whether you're studying English as a second language or as a foreign language. I hope this has been helpful and given you some more vocabulary as well. And do look for the other lesson which is about similes and with this one, the metaphors, we have a quiz for you on the website ingvid.com. Please go and give it a try and see you again soon. Okay, bye.